Hi guys, ever since I watched Man of Steel, although it isn't the greatest uh, superhero film, it's still quite good. I always wanted to own my very own uh, command key from kal ship. So I thought, I'd have a look online, I found a few different ones, you can get 3D printed ones for about £30-£40, or you can actually buy the keyring, but then I thought, I have a DIY channel, why don't I try and make one myself? And here it is! Now I've only been able to find one other YouTube video of this kind making a DIY video on the Man of Steel command key and there's a link to that one below and he made his out of uh, clay whereas this is made out of solid wood or well, soft wood and in this video I'm going to show you how I made it and I'm also going to show you this smaller one that I turned into an actual keyring that you can put onto keys so let's get going. So there's no uh, subtitles this video, I thought I'd give you some audio commentary. So we started with uh, three strips of wood. I didn't have a solid block, block of wood so I had to use three strips. So I just used some normal wood PVA glue, glue the three strips of wood together, put it in a vise, let it set overnight and that would give you, that gave me my starting point for the project. So you can see in the vice itself and what I've done, I've gone on to Google Images, printed off the Superman chest logo and just using a bit of PVA glue, glued it onto the edge of the three blocks. And then next what you want to do is using a thin chisel, just gently and accurately uh, shave away the edges and using the Superman logo that you've glued onto the end as a guide to shave out the edges of the symbol itself. And as you can see I'm using a junior hacksaw to saw away the bottom left and right hand edges of the command key. And depending on how long you want the command key to be will depend on how far down you cut. And then once I've cut both edges I'll use a chisel to prise away the excess wood which should give us a command key shape. And as you can see there I'm just sawing away the other edge and again be careful when you're sawing you don't want to end up chopping your hand off or sawing into your finger. Using a chisel and a hammer, chisel away the excess wood. And as you can see there, as I'm breaking away that piece, the command key is coming together. The shape is coming coming out nicely out of the wood. And as unfortunately as I break out this right hand piece, I end up snapping the right hand edge of the actual command key off. It's just it was just the uh, natural edge of the three blocks of wood, and uh, I was easily able to glue it back together using wood PVA glue. Yep, as you can see there, the wood has split, but not really a problem. As I mentioned, I can just glue it back together.
So again, I'll just stick that in the vise, uh, tighten it up and leave it to dry and then carry on from there. So once the glue had dried, I placed the uh, command key back into the vise and went at it with the chisel again. Just fine tuning so I can get the shape I want. Again, this all depends on yourselves, how big you want to put in the logo. Um, but yeah, the more time you put in, the more accurate it'll be. So I'm just shaving it down just so it goes to a point at the end at the bottom and then I'm going to move on to the sandpaper at a later stage just to fine tune just to smoothen all the edges Now that all the chiseling's done and I've sandpapered all the uh, sanded all the edges, now I'm going to move on to the actual design on the edge. And as you can see, the bottom left there, I've got a few printed out because you are going to end up ripping these as you're digging in with uh, to carve out the designs. So yeah, just print off uh, your design. Just again, stick it on there, stuck it on there with a bit of PVA glue, and we're ready to go and edge in the design. So the next step is to take a small flim fat flat bladed screwdriver and what I'm going to do is score along the edge of the S. And as you can see on the face it's the white areas that are going to be uh, scored into uh, to give the command key that 3D effect. And as you can see I'm just scoring along the edges with the flat bladed screwdriver just to give me a starting point for when it comes to scoring out the insides of the white area. So as you can see there now I've edged around the top part and it just acts as a guideline so when, you, when it comes to carving it out um, you don't go beyond the lines. Now with the left hand edges a simple, yeah, as you can see there, just dig it in with the flat bladed screwdriver and that'll be enough for the, for the little thin strips on the edge of the design. Again as you can see, just carving around the edges of the actual design itself. And just take your time, there's no rush. The more time you take here to be accurate, the better it'll be when it comes to, and the easier it'll be when it comes to scoring out the insides of the white area. that's all the carving now done. I'm going to switch over to a thin bladed uh, Phillips screwdriver. As you can see there. And I'm going to be using that to carve out the inside of the designs. Again this is the first time I've ever done anything like this so I'm just Going it, <laughs> just going at it as I go. If I if I mess it up, I mess it up. If I don't, I don't. But as you can see there, I'm just digging in and turning the the Phillips screwdriver, just trying to carve away at the wood itself.
and here you can see I'm just switching back to the chisel just to dig in and break up the bits of wood and then I'll switch back to the flat bladed and I was just using a mixture of the Phillips screwdriver the small flat blade and the chisel just to break up the wood and score into it just so I could dig into the command, seat itself, uh, command key itself and score out the design And then once you're happy with the design, sand off the remaining uh, S label that you stuck on using PVA glue until the, all the sanding's done and it's nice and smooth. And then get your little flat bladed screwdriver, just dig out any sawdust, any bits that got lodged into the little nooks and crannies. And as you can see there, the more you dig into the wood itself, the more deeper it'll be. And then once you're happy, it should look something like this. And then here I'm just using uh, some fine grit sandpaper, I'm going to fold up into a little rectangle. And I'm just getting into all the nooks and crannies and the crevices, just to smoothen it all out. And as you can see here, this is the small one. Uh, this was my first attempt. This is one I'm going to uh, turn into a keyring, and there's the big one, all nice and finished, looking nice and smooth. So I have some uh, grey alloy wheel paint, spray paint, as you can see there, and that is the colour I'm going to use to spray it. So there you go, I'm spraying it there. Make sure you well ventilate when using spray paint. There you go, spraying the other side. So that's the command key all sprayed up, looking good. And when I was making my first attempt, the little small uh, command key, I accidentally cut away some of the S design on the front and I had to fill it in using a bit of filler. And as you can see, the, the face of the S is all shiny and this is due to the filler. And I found this out by pure uh, coincidence. So I'm using my instant filler that I use most times when I'm doing my uh, projects. And what I'm gonna do here is just smear smear it onto the S itself like so and and then once that dries I'm going to give it another spray and it'll give the S that shiny appearance and I just think it uh, adds to the effect of the of, of the prop looking a lot better and it just makes the S pop out and don't worry about any of the filler getting into the uh, into the gaps because as you can see, uh, just use your little thin uh, screwdriver just to dig it out again. And just make sure you get all the remaining filler out of all the little gaps.
And then once you're happy that you've got all the remaining excess uh, filler out of the gaps, leave it to dry and then move on to the next step which is a second coat of spray paint as you can see here. And give it a good few sprays, let the uh, spray uh, adhere to the filler itself and then once that dries it will give you a nice shiny S on the face of the command key. Now that these two are finished, we have the big one and the small one. I'm going to set that one aside and I'm going to see if I can make this into a keychain. And I'm going to try and drill two holes, one in the back and one in the front, and try and get them to meet up. And then I will try and thread a keyring so that then I can attach the man key to my car keys and carry it around with me. Now I'm going to be doing this blind, I've never done this before so it could go really well or terribly wrong, I could end up splitting it with, I've got a small thin drill bit but I could end up splitting it and botching it up. It took a lot of fiddling off camera, but I managed to get the key ring through. And as you can see there, try and zoom on it. That is the original hole I uh, drilled. There. And I realised when I put the key ring through, it wasn't sitting right, it was sitting on its back, so, as you can see there. And I didn't really like the way it was sitting. So I filled that in with a bit of filler and then repainted it over and I drilled a hole on the bottom still met up with one I drilled in the back threaded the keyring through again very fiddly I had to do it off camera because it took quite a few attempts but there it is now it's on my keys a nice little man of steel command key keyring <laughs> and that is the one the big one you saw me make in the actual video Yeah, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there's only one other YouTube DIY video that I've been able to find um, doing this using modelling clay. So I thought I'd give it a go using a solid piece of wood. And I might make a little base, a little stand for this to sit on. But yeah, let me know what you think below. Leave your comments. Don't forget to subscribe, uh, I know there's not been a video for about a week now, but maybe a bit more, I've been having troubles with my computer and the internet, but the 300 subscribers announcement video is coming, and I've also got a review for the Ruby's Batman cowl that arrived a couple of days ago, that'll be uploading soon as well. So yeah, let me know what you think, thanks for watching.
I'll see you for the next video. Cheers.